this topic. Uh, it was brought up to the uh, members of the General Assembly, and we didn't get very much feedback or information of any kind as far as the movement. And last uh, session, there was a discussion concerning um, the EMCs and their availability to provide the service. But <clears throat> contrary to the law, statute that was adopted, there's been little or any visible uh, movement from that, from that time. We still, we still have the issue of the area of the ground, Moody uh, Air Force Base. <clears throat> Moody itself, I think, will acknowledge their okay shape. On base proper, they have not indicated that they have restrictions that are prohibiting them in their uh, services. So, right now, that means that their current mission or possibly even future missions, they feel like they're in pretty good shape on base. Again, it, it, with them and the airmen, it's a quality of life issue outside the base for families that live near Moody that doesn't have any I think it's fair for the board to consider that it has a long-term impact on the possible missions down the road when the Pentagon uh, is making determination on projects. Uh, that is a late day for our community to determine what the load so I think it's still a viable issue that y'all are interested in based on your comments to me that we need to keep an eye on it, we need to keep it in the forefront. Well, I think that's the only way you can look at it because from, from in my opinion, from a single county uh, ability to be able to make a, a, a large impact in the broadband county-wide is very expensive and very difficult. Um, I think the real issue is that we continue to talk to our delegation because they put the bills in place. I mean, they've got things that just says the EMC can, you know, can now get into it. But they operate EMCs like a business, so they've got to be able to justify that investment themselves. And so I think that the state, is, as long as they can continue to improve on the steps that they've made at this point, it's going to have to get, in my opinion, it's going to have to take some money from the state, really from the feds, starting to come down before you're really going to have a major impact on broadband uh, and internet capabilities in the rural areas. Because you leave it to the private sector, it's just plain and simple. It's not a good viable investment for them. They cannot get a return on their investment. So they have to run the line and die. Yeah. With no idea that you're going to have houses there. You know, there, there, it, it just doesn't make any sense to do that. One thing on top of that argument is Chris Carwell, the Georgia Chamber of Commerce, came out and said that in the next 25 plus years there's going to be a lot of migration from rural areas into the cities. It falls up all day. No, because that's where people's going to live. Mm -hmm. Get out of rural areas so much. I'm talking about real rural areas, not like I'm going to get it unincorporated land of Canada. <laughs> well, that's right. 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 That's and the thought process that in my mind is that we only get further behind or, or possibly get more costly. And if we don't from that story, we something to incentivize it. Well, I just don't, you know, again, it, it's just one of those issues. If you back up 50 years ago, maybe not quite that long, and just
just like Thomasville. Thomasville was a, is in a, Thomas County is in a unique position because they own and operate and sell all of their utilities. So there's a tremendous amount of revenue that's coming in to the city of Thomasville just from the sale of that. So they're able to expand their broadband CNS and just keep you know keep it growing because I mean, it's highly profitable to them. But cities and counties, I remember I was about 1978, late 70s or somewhere along there, where you could no longer have a MEAC. You either had it then and you're okay with it, but you couldn't have a new one. So for us to, to get into the utility slash internet business, I don't think you could really even do it. I think the questions that we've had is that could we invest in a loop or a backbone, if you want to call it that, and then let these providers, all these private providers, attach to that to be able to go into the community. I mean, that's still a viable op op uh, option. But if I recall, right, Joe, and you help me with this, we looked at this when I first came in in 2013, 2014, and the estimated price tag on it at that time was $40 million to just do that. So, I mean, there was just no way you could do it. Um, we discussed at that time the cost of that huge um, <coughs> price that um, any future uh, monies would have to come from spots. Mm -hmm. Paige has looked up the uh, DCA <coughs> website and they have a comment concerning the counties in the state. Right, so it looks like the, the general consensus has been from states that the, SC, the FCC's form that she used to report whether or not you have broadband is grossly overestimated. That they consider broadband, you, you have broadband, whether or not you can get it hooked up to a location within 10 days, which is not the bandwidth issue that we've been having, especially now in Lake Park and some other areas. So in 2020, by the end of 2020, um, DCA has a broadband deployment initiative, which is supposed to create a location level map for the entire state of Georgia. So by the end of the year, we'll have a clearer picture of what the problem actually is. Instead of, you know, there's everyone wants to say, if you look at the heat maps, because I just pulled up a couple, it looks from the heat maps like we shouldn't be having the issues that we are. So we know that that data is not, not good. So, we can um, probably find out when we're while we're economic development um, next week, mm -hmm. kind of where that is. Good. You know, just, you know, just see what resources are out there uh, for the most part. Um, like I said, the further the longer we go, the more we get behind. And if, if, if say they begin to come from rural areas to the city, uh, we have that resource here as well. I know where I live at. My, my phone service is Windstream, and I, I haven't had any kind of internet service up here since we've been up there. Finally, had to get one of those, what they call them, boxes, my Verizon hot stick, whatever. Hot spot. Hot spot. Hot spot. And that's kind of what I was utilizing for that. But then Windstream did make the decision that they were going to go ahead and run it through there. And they're, they're trying to improve all of that area that's west of Hay Island, up there, of that their territory. Um, so, I mean, I've got it now. I'm just as happy as I'm being with it since we got it. But they're just, they just now were able to justify putting in the infrastructure with all of the service connections that they can make. And in the less the company, it doesn't matter who they are, the Southern Fiber Net, if it's Mediacom, it doesn't matter. They're not going to run that infrastructure into a little area until they've got pretty good confidence that they're going to have a customer base. And then you're not going to get issues too much with competitors trying to go in and fight for the same neighborhood. It's almost like this one's running here, that one's over there, and everybody's where about that, but they're waiting on each other as much as anything in some of these areas to be able to justify that investment. Because it's a business decision at that point. But until the feds and the state begins to push down some funding, whether it be through tax credits, whether it be through uh, or some additional funding to say, whatever the case may be, uh, we're not going to see a lot of moving on. I mean, it just is what it is right now. 
Did somebody just send me a text? I did. FCA approves no. rural broadband. That's, that's, that's me. That's me. That's you. It's a 20, 20 billion dollar effort last week was passed. Nationwide. 20 million nationwide. 20.4 from the FCC yeah, to, for uh, rural America. Um, 20 million? Billion. 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 Yeah. I'm being sarcastic. Billion. Yeah. So is that something possible? Just looking to maybe to go on this thing. But I will add this is that, I mean, just like everything, it's an ever changing situation. We're talking about the technology oh. changing, they're talking about 5G, they're talking about whatever, whatever, whatever. And just like AT&T now, um, they'll tell you their option is, since they have direct TV, is use that. And that's what they, they put. They want you, you want to improve it. Then they also, they now use that. So they're asking, that's their option for It's the satellite phone. And it is an option. I mean, that's what you've got out there. So the capabilities are there for people to be able to get it. But it's, sometimes it's just so much of the uh, it's very costly to get. Mm -hmm. Linda Kelly has said he's also got some that anytime he's here to come and talk about that, she would be a PCA. My concern is primarily around the movie sector. I don't think that we need to spend the money trying to, I mean, through this community, we need to encourage it, we need to be a conduit. do our dead level best to get it here, but I'm not in favor of spending lost money and trying to create a bazillion dollar infrastructure to, you know, because I mean, I believe I mean, just like in the, in the sector, in the North sector, I mean, right now, as we speak, they're boring under 41 running fiber optics um, all in that area because they know that the customer base is is there and it's growing and they're making plans how they get it over to Valdell with the development that's coming out there. I mean, as they see those things happening and it's the need rising, then they're going to provide the service. I just have trouble kind of getting over out of my lane into the private sector and well. There was opportunities, as I said earlier, there was opportunities for communities to do that years ago, but that opportunity has since passed. And so now the private sector are, are doing it. So, well, all the money that was invested into those projects, that all of my technology used to come off of the And that's the hard part is about the time you get engineered and, and in the ground and something's going to change, right. and it's not going to be good. Well, if you think about all that, it switches back and forth. It goes from wired service to, to cell service or satellite service, and back to wired there, then now fiber optic cable. And, you know, so I mean, it just. Well, we have new Ecom and AT&T in our subdivision. And whenever AT and T put their fiber in a couple of years ago, everyone in the subdivision went to AT and T. And now there's the same times of day in the morning and in the evening during the week, and then the same times of day on Saturday and Sunday. That if everyone in the subdivision is on it, it just slows down to nothing. I mean, you can just. I feel like sitting out today too. I hey, some y'all get back on me, get calm because you're slowing down. The, I mean. It, is there anything we can do, say, to help that outside of, I guess, the, the customer calling and asking? Uh, could they improve the speeds or? Who was it, Chairman? Was it you that asked about the someone service being someone was, or was it Commissioner Weisenbaker? It was that someone had let their service go, yeah. and someone else was waiting on service, and you checked to park. see if they could park it, and they wouldn't. No, they yeah, they don't. AT&T specifically in the south end of the county, they. Their, their wit is limited there. So if you give up, even if you move, you, you give up that part, there's no guarantee that you can move that service from your existing home over to a new home. Because the part comes with the residence, not with the customer. And they're good with some people being off of it for a while yeah. because it speeds it up. That was something to some people. I think one thing that we haven't addressed from a commission standpoint that I just
do think it's something that we are going to have to look at along these lines. We're going to have to look at the future needs of whether or not we are a broadband friendly community from the standpoint of, of, our, of our local government from any kind of ordinances or regulations that we have specifically about the new technology and we all talk about 5G and all that but a lot of discussions about where those are located those little mini towers on the service poles there are requirements and there's expectations of the community and what you some restrictions that unknowing you may have on those providers we need to look at those things to make sure that as a community that we are as friendly as we can be to those I mean, it doesn't matter to, to those providers so that just something that we have or something that we may be inadvertently doing that makes things difficult to do their job. So we're not excluded without even knowing. Exactly. Yeah. Um, last meeting, I think Mark gave me a uh, ordinance, a draft on a particular community on 5G. And I've given that staff to evaluate but that, that, to me, that's that's the work that we as a local community are going to be able to address to make sure that again that we're broadband friendly, so that that, that we that we again as I said inadvertently are not making it too restrictive for these companies, private or not, for the southern fiber net or whomever, so that when they go into a community, we don't have anything that stands in the way that makes their services even more costly. And in line with what you're saying, um, is it possible we get we can meet some of those companies, or just uh, are they having any events that we possibly can attend just to you know, get to know them, or just see kind of what they like to see, what they would consider a broadband friendly community? We have had communication with Parkway, we have had communication with Southern. say that that's a long-term goal that we just continue to address and continue to work on it. And if the matter is related to future growth, well, certainly it is. The answer to that one would be yes. And is it something that we need to be concerned about in the 2021 budget, I'd say no. But what's our goal? Is to continue to address broadband and stay abreast of yeah. what would be a broadband friendly community. Yeah. Broadband friendly community. Yeah. Broadband friendly. Yeah. Broadband friendly. Community. Yeah. Yeah. It, as well as trying to meet, uh, find out what can we do. Well, that's all part of being that broadband friendly community. When we find out and bring exactly what obstacles that we made that we said inadvertently we created, then if we can work on getting those things changed, then I think we're going to. Anyone object to that as a goal? schools on the, the outskirts parts of the county. And when you got schools out there, you got houses and residents and unfortunately students, kids out there that can benefit from it. You know, you know, so, so some of those kids, their only internet and broadband is at school. One thing I would add, and maybe this is a comment I've ever made, but if there's an opportunity for us to like, as we're doing water sewer infrastructure and that sort of thing, I mean, is there a would there be an opportunity to, to help with the costs of, of like fiber optics or whatever if we've got right away cleared and equipment? I mean, just maybe we're throwing out there that if we're digging a trench across the county for a water line somewhere, so we yeah. ask them, do you, hey, do y'all want to, you know, y'all want to bid on 
dropping some lines in the dirt while well, we got it exposed. But I don't know if you can do well, that. Yeah, well, I think, again, being internet friendly would allow accessibility to county easements for them to be able to utilize that rather than them having to come into a community and go and, and enter into additional agreements for those easements. If we make easements that we have available, well, identify the ones that would be available or not. That's all part of being again. Well, that's what I was saying. Going back to your point, I mean, if we're going to truly be friendly, I mean, do we? Yeah. How do we communicate with them what we're doing? Do they make their services, yeah. installation services, or implementation easier? Right. Or,